And Brandon Straka joins us now. So, Brandon, we've I've followed you, for example, for, uh, through a lot of your endeavors. You're very vocal on social media. I've seen you on the ground to all your different campaigns. But I want to start with the Walk Away campaign that you're participating in right now. I know that you helped organize it, that you go all across the country doing this. So can you tell myself and our viewers what exactly is behind that campaign? Sure. Well, I started Walk Away on May 26th of 2018 because I'm a former liberal and a former Democrat who walked away from the Democratic Party and the ideology of liberalism. I actually voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. And uh, after doing kind of a long journey of research to understand how did the media get the election so wrong and why would anyone vote for Donald Trump, what I ultimately discovered is that we are being largely hoodwinked by the media in this country and that if you're a minority, uh, we're being manipulated, we're being exploited, uh, both by the liberal media, by the Democratic politicians, by the ideology, ideology of liberalism at large. And so I created a movement encouraging people to walk away from the left. And what we're doing right now is traveling around the country doing these Rescue America rallies, that's what we're calling them, mm -hmm. because what we, re what we really want to do is embolden people to come out and stand up for our country, particularly going into this election, as we're watching the radical left destroy our country from the inside out, it's our way of saying we do not give permission to the radical left to destroy our country, to cause such division, so much hatred and so much violence. We are going to stand up and fight for our country. And one event that really stuck out to me that you participated in as well, that's part of exactly what you're talking about, took place in Baltimore. There was a councilman who wanted to remove a statue of a fallen police sol or a police officer, I believe, and you organized an event there to essentially speak out against that practice, against the idea of removing a statue of that fallen police officer. What was that event like? Well, that was actually the very first Rescue America rally that we did, which was two weeks ago. Um, it was great. I mean, we were able to kind of kick it off. And what I really love is that we're, we're also trying to kind of create a culture of courage uh, amongst those who are not on the left, because we live in two very different Americas right now, certainly in terms of permissiveness in our culture. There's absolute permission for people on the radical left to go out and tear down statues, to not wear masks, to go out and protest, to do all of these things. But for any of us who want to stand up on the opposite side and kind of fight back, there are all these rules and restrictions that were that are supposed to be applied to us in this incredible double standard. So what I really love is that we're seeing people who do not subscribe to this leftist ideology coming out, being bold and being courageous and saying, no, we want to support our police. We want to support our traditions and our culture and our customs here in America. And if there are problems in our culture, such as maybe uh, statues or, or, or problems with um, racism within our culture, let's have conversations about them. Let's debate this and let's in a civilized way come to a consen consensus about how we're going to handle these issues. Let's not just go out violently and start tearing things down, burning buildings, spray painting, beating people up and even killing people in certain situations. And I'm glad that I get to talk to you today about this, because oftentimes when you do turn on the televisions, you do see the very polarized extremes on both sides. You see, for example, those on the left saying that these protests, these types of movements are completely peaceful, that there's no violence whatsoever. And sometimes when you talk to those on the right, they'll say that it's strictly just violence. It's uh, there, that there's no, nothing going on during the day. And you do get those mixed stories. But when I talk to someone who's actually on the ground, like yourself, you get to speak to what the average American is saying about this, not some media pundit or anything like that, anyone who has an alternative agenda. So when you're talking to these types of people who are coming out to your events, as far as the supporters go, what are they saying about this? Well, I think that a lot of people are feeling a little bit lost. I think they're feeling scared. I think they're feeling alienated. And I think they're feeling alone. Uh, it's a terrible situation to while we're simultaneously in the middle of a shutdown for a pandemic and people are being told, don't leave your homes, don't go outside, stay at home. You know, so, of course, like, what are we doing? We're just sitting at home watching television or, 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 you know, rifling through social media. And all we're seeing is imagery of people looting, stealing, committing acts of violence, all of these really scary images. And we're being told, stay home. Also, the same people are who are telling us to stay at home are saying, oh, no, it's, it's a peaceful protest. We don't know what you're talking about. What violence? What violence? We're seeing it with our own eyes. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is actually offering people the opportunity to come out of their homes, get together to feel like they're not alone and they're not alienated. And we're providing a space for people to stand up, not violently, not angrily, but actually in great unity and patriotism and, and, and celebration of freedom to, again, say we are not going to, to surrender our country to the radical left. And one more thing I'd like to say quickly about what you just said about people on the right who are maybe saying it's only violence or it's, it's only these things. 
Yes, it's true. There are definitely peaceful protesters who are supporting the Black Lives Matter movement and some of these other things. Here's where I have a big problem, though. If you're a part of a movement like, say, Black Lives Matter, and your, your objective and your goal is to peacefully protest something, once it's been hijacked by violent, uh, radical uh, people who are going out and causing so much destruction, you need to figure out a way to separate your message because it is not the obligation of the American people to say, well, these Black Lives Matter people are really kind and, and peaceful protesters, while these are burning building down, right. bu buildings down and beating people up. So you need to find a way to disassociate yourself from the radicals who have really, really overtaken Black Lives Matter. And that is, at this point, what that movement is synonymous with. No, you're exactly right. I mean, it's important to call out evil wherever it exists, no matter what the people are doing. Uh, it exists on both sides of the political spectrum as well. I mean, there have been instances where those on the uh, far right try to hijack otherwise very good movements in order to right. push their own nefarious actions. But right now, you're exactly right. When we talk about the Black Lives Matter movement, it seems like there is support behind that movement. But when you talk about Black Lives Matter TM, the organization, if you will, that's where people are starting to see that there are other ulterior motives, other parts of that agenda that a lot of people don't agree with. So I think you're exactly right to say, not only for people who may not agree with that movement, they also need to recognize the difference, but it's even more important, in my opinion, for people who do believe in that movement, because if you can't differentiate the two, you're exactly right. It's going to get hijacked, and those bad actors are going to be the ones that makes the headlines and really defines that movement. I think you're exactly right. Brandon Straka, I really appreciate you coming on, not only what you're doing on the streets on a daily basis, but coming on and breaking down what you're doing as well. Thank you.